idea of wild places existing in the city. And I think it's just one of my mental tropes that I like the idea of anomalous things lying together. Knowing that I could surf in New York City is just adds to that. It adds to that feeling of like there is wildness and unpredictability within an urban environment that's natural. It's like a natural wildness that I, I can access. York City is sort of not just from the surfing angle but I see it from living in Rockaway in a more natural angle where you know we live next to the Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge we do a lot of running and kind of take advantage of this openness out here I had this idea of surfing that was very much like the Beach Boys. It was California, it was blonde boys and girls, you know, like California people in bikinis. I love the idea of an urban surf experience, so it totally changed my idea. I first started surfing when I was 13. In Rockaway proper, I don't know if there were that many girls surfing, but down in Breezy Point, at that time in the 60s, there were a lot of girls that surfed, some more than others. It was pretty much all we had to do. So like, I knew these two people that surfed, and also at the same time, they were asking me when I was going to make another girl gang film, because I made, I made a movie about uh, girl gangs in New York City. So I just kind of mashed the two ideas together, like I should make a, a movie about girls in a gang who surf and so just in the process of making that movie I started surfing Of this name Katrina Del Mar. Del Mar, it's like of the sea, you know. Now I'm surfing. It's funny that I've grown into my name by surfing because I was always like this, like you know, downtown chick, you know, like smoking cigarettes, you know, having cocktails back in the day. You know what I mean? It's like that, that was my thing, it's just to be like New York City nightlife, you know, artist, you know. Badass. That's New Jersey, straight across Sandy Hook. And basically, I mean, we just come up here Oh, the waves are getting really bigger down there now. I live in Breezy Point in the summertime, but in the wintertime I live in Manhattan. I could feel the wind switch sometimes when I'm walking around the city and I'm like, oh God, it just went offshore and I'm here. And you know, like I get a little nutty about it. Like have to talk to myself, like talk myself off the ledge. Like you're a grown up, you have to go to work. Okay, the wind switched, like suck it up, you know.
there's this fallacy or notion that surfers are kind of like, you know, zend out bums and who don't go anywhere in life, but at least the ones I've seen in New York are all, you know, really high achieving, really self-motivated types, especially the women. You know, they push themselves and they, you know, push themselves professionally and, you know, they push themselves in the water. So, you know, that's an interesting dynamic too. I mean, it's like really hard to learn to surf at Rockaway Beach because the waves are so, I mean, they're like so sudden. You have to be quick. You have to be able to be split. It's taken me a long, long time to learn how to surf. It's a fast breaking wave and it's like, if, if you're not like sort of well-timed, you're gonna miss it. And I miss it a lot. I think we've done head counts where we go out in the summer and it, we've literally counted almost 100 people in the lineup. No matter how good the waves are, the whole experience is either enhanced or just goes downhill based on who's out there. I guess it's like sharing the, you know, sh you have to share the feeling of it. As much as, you know, I like the water to be a little more empty, I think that if you can have someone experience that, it just kind of makes them a little better. I like surfing with friends, and so I'll make an effort to bring somebody with me, you know? And, and a bunch of my friends have said, like, oh my god, you surf? I want to try that. And so I'm like, okay, come on, let's try. You know, and I like that inclusiveness. For me, it's nice, like, when I catch a wave, if, if somebody sees me do it, it makes it all the more exciting. You know, like, did you see that? And if somebody says, yeah, I saw that, that was great. I just feel like so much more like, I don't know, sense of accomplishment. I'm thinking back to like my grandmother's generation. They had club night. They would all hang out, have club night. They would have like coffee or drinks or whatever. And they would either pray the rosary, play cards, knit, or just hang around and talk shit. You know what I mean? Talk trash. It was really nice to start to enter this new world and everything's new and, you know, it's like a new relationship and everything's just getting better. You know, I still had my frustrations. I, you know, I, I have these high achievement things. So if I didn't surf well, it would ruin my whole day. And then there's the pressure of I'm working, but there's swell and everybody's talking about how fun it is and they're taking off and I'm missing it. And then you get kind of become like a drug addict. Oh, I'm, it's been so flat and I'm so depressed. And then you make the investment to live out here. So then you really feel like this is what defines me. You know, in fact, I went to therapy because of surfing. <laughs> it got to a point where I was anticipating like hurricane swells and going, oh my God, can I do it? You know, like as if it, I'm going, you know, like I'm a pro football player and I'm camping up for the next game. And I talked to a friend and he said, I know a surfing psychiatrist. So I had to go to a shrink. I went in there and I said, well, I'm here because surfing's driving me nuts. It's giving me these immense highs and lows. And I feel like so much is dependent on it and I don't want to be such a slave to it. It's, you know, you realize it's okay to miss it or it's okay to have these other interests go back to a place where, where surfing is not put on this pedestal. You know, it's a work in progress, but it's a much healthier place. It's like a symbol for so many other things. Like, it's about achievement. It's about whether, you know, you're pushing yourself hard enough. Because it's just you and the, and, and the ocean, and the ocean always changes. Surfing is so humbling. I remember coming back and my mother would be screaming off the deck, do you know that you have a child? You can't be running around surfing like that. And I'd be like, okay, mom, I got a little water. She was kind of funny about it, but now she says to me that it's, um, she says, it's like your golf, that's all. It's just like your golf. And I was like, yeah, that's it, that's my golf. 
It certainly ha enhances my, like, f feeling of well-being in the world, you know? Oh, it's just a love, you know, a passion. And I think that anybody that's ever taken off on a wave and had that feeling, once you have it, you don't want to really ever let it go. I hope I can be like one of those, you know, really old people. <laughs> really old at surfing, you know? It's nice to be able to do this thing. I mean, I'm glad we learned, I learned how to do this. It's funny, I still check the surf cam every morning, but um, it doesn't, you know, I try not to get it to define my life so much. It totally takes my brain and puts it on hold, which is nice, it's a nice relief. It just smooths out the static.